Are you having ongoing digestive issues? Maybe you have heart palpitations or other symptoms you might think are related to thiamine deficiency. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at thiamine deficiency, how it may present with symptoms, what some of the diet variables may be that allow for thiamine deficiency to occur, and some other things related to thiamine deficiency you might want to consider. Again, as I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, diagnosis, understanding what's going on with your body. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormones, etc., click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at thiamine deficiency. So in this video, we're going to look at thiamine deficiency from fatigue to forgetfulness. This is how thiamine deficiency impacts our bodies. As noted in a previous video, thiamine deficiency makes itself known as the enzymes it helps function start to slow down in their activity. These are the enzymes that are typically required to help break down carbohydrates and to a lesser extent amino acids, and fatty acids. But those that consume larger amounts of carbohydrates and alcohol are particularly susceptible to deficiency in thiamine. Thiamine is needed to break down glucose via pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme is a complex and thiamine is the cofactor. If your glucose is not able to be broken down via that critical step with pyruvate dehydrogenase, more of it's going to get shuttled into making triglycerides, which will then get stored as fat. Because the more glucose that comes in, the more thiamine that's needed to break down that glucose. It is often common for diabetics to become deficient in thiamine. Now, if and when that diabetic starts to change their diet and reduce the glucose coming in, they may not need such a large thiamine amount. But if you continue to maintain high glucose intake, then you need a corresponding high thiamine intake to help turn that into energy. Now that enzyme isn't only dependent on thiamine and the whole process of glucose breakdown is not just a thiamine dependent process. There's multiple factors involved, but it is a very critical step. So what are some of the symptoms and manifestations of thiamine deficiency? Day to day, a little bit of reduced thiamine coming into your body is not going to have a very big noticeable impact. However, over the long term, the areas of the body that are more dependent on cell turnover and energy seem to be impacted the most. So this is oftentimes going to affect energy levels leading to fatigue and weakness, and also some cognitive effects can show up as the disease progresses. The nervous system is particularly susceptible, which can lead to numbness and tingling, difficulty walking, and sometimes it can lead to irritability and emotional changes and instability as well, confusion and memory impairment as the lack of thiamine starts to affect more and more of the nervous system tissue and neurons. All of these symptoms are related to how thiamine acts as a cofactor for the enzymes in metabolism. Remember, our nervous system needs large amounts of ATP in order to send those signals back and forth. So when that starts to go on, the nerve signal transmission and neurotransmitter production is affected, leading to decreased nerve signals, and even the neurons can start to deteriorate. On the cardiovascular side of things, there can be increased heart rate, palpitations, and in more severe cases, cardiomyopathy, which is an enlargement of the heart and eventually can lead to heart failure. And basically what's going on there is without sufficient thiamine, there's not enough ATP production. So the contraction of the heart isn't happening. You're not recruiting the same amount of cells to contract that heart and the elasticity can start to change 
and you can get an enlargement of the heart. You can also start to get an imbalance in your electrolytes that are needed for the electrical signaling to take place, which is also how it can affect the nervous system, but specifically for the cardiovascular system. When you get an electromagnetic change across the cell membrane and that electromagnetic charge is being supported by energy production. When you don't have enough energy production, the electromagnetic charge also can get altered and lead to improper firing and electrical signals in the heart itself. The gastrointestinal system is also often affected and can lead to loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. And this is mostly related to the effect of thiamine on the contractility and motility in and throughout the digestive tract. In really severe cases, thiamine deficiency can lead to something known as beriberi. And there are two main types of beriberi. There's the wet beriberi and the dry beriberi. The wet beriberi is more of the cardiovascular effects, uh, rapid heart rate swelling in the extremities as the enlargement of the heart can eventually lead to heart failure. And because of the lack of circulation, you end up with swelling in the extremities. Dry beriberi is more of the nervous system, neuropathy, weakness, muscle cramping, and things like that. Of course, there can be some overlap. I think it's probably some susceptibility. It depends on where the person is more susceptible. But such extreme cases of thiamine deficiency are not commonly seen today. However, if you have the right kind of diet and genetic susceptibility, it wouldn't be unheard of to have mild thiamine deficiencies. And this is often overlooked because the thiamine is fortified in our foods. It's often overlooked as even a possibility, but these days people are changing their diet so much and not eating cereals and grains oftentimes. And thiamine deficiency can happen when we're not eating those things on a regular basis. So let's say you are a vegetarian, but having some digestive issues, so you start avoiding beans and grains and other things. This might not be enough to cause an issue, but over the short term, maybe not a big deal, but over the long term, this could be enough to create a thiamine deficiency. And, and because thiamine can affect the digestive tract as well, you may be looking in the wrong place, attributing your symptoms to a digestive issue. Initially, digestive issue got better, but now with your restricted diet, the thiamine deficiency is maintaining those symptoms. It's also worth noting here that alcohol is a big factor in thiamine deficiency as it depletes thiamine and also interferes with the enzymes that need thiamine. This is why chronic alcohol consumption is one of the most common reasons why thiamine deficiency occurs. In more severe cases, this can lead to Wernicke's encephalopathy or Korshakoff's syndrome. These types of things are more severe with Wernicke's encephalopathy. There's going to be lots of confusion, inability to coordinate your movements, known as ataxia, eye movement abnormalities, and potentially even risk of coma. So this is more of a medical emergency type thing, but you can see how some people with severe alcoholism, their gait starts to change. And even when they're not under the influence of alcohol, they're often stumbling and, and can't move properly. So how common is thiamine deficiency and what are some of the genetics that contribute to thiamine deficiency? That's what we're going to look at in the next video on thiamine deficiency. So how do I do? Did that help you better understand thiamine deficiency, what the risk factors are and how it might present? Hopefully it does. If you do have questions about this, or other topics related to this, drop it in the comments section. Happy to answer your question. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.